be mindful of everyone's time. I know um, Susan is in the queue. Ms. Collins is in the queue, so I'm going to bring her on right now. But I want to start off by saying Susan Ford Collins is a sought-after speaker, trainer, and the founder of Technology of Success. She began her career as a young researcher at the National Institutes of Health, with the radical idea to focus on research on healthy, highly successful people rather than dysfunctional ones. I want to thank our featured guest of the night, Susan Ford Collins. Susan, how are you doing? Oh, I'm just fine, and I'm happy that it's Susan. It's definitely a first name call here. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely, definitely. It's Susan and Ted, that's, that's exactly how, how it is. So, Susan, I, I was so grateful this morning – I noticed um, an item that recently came in. I received the um, t- Technology of Success Series Book 1. Yes, and there's, yes. There's the Joy so of many... Success. Yes, yes. Well, and... you know, we spend so many hours and so much effort getting the long hours and hard work of success, and I decided, since I didn't want that to be the title, that I would write a book called The Joy of Success and take a look at the upside of all of this that we do and, you know, here to think tonight about how we can fall in love with the job we've got instead of always wanting to be doing something different. Uh, It really shifts your life, and it really brings things back into perspective. Susan, that's excellent. I have so many questions. I'm not sure where to start, but it's it's really helpful knowing that you focus on highly successful people and highly successful skills rather than looking at the negative dysfunctional skill set that's out there. So Well, and I, you know, At NIH, I was laughed at. It's one of those moments that changes your life. You know, I stood up and I suggested, let's study how the successful people, and the whole room of 250 people laughed at me. And, of course, I was the most junior member there at NIH. So I had to have a head of steam going inside of me that was pretty strong to be able to come back from that one. So, you know, that was many, many years ago. And the last laugh was that I gave a talk in Washington, D.C. at the National Grant Management Association, and a whole group of people came afterwards. I had told the story about NIH being laughed at, and they said they were the people who decided on grants at NIH, and they only wished they had been there because they would have shouted, yes, Susan, it's a great idea. So, you know, if you work long and hard, it all comes around to you. But what I find is that most people spend their time thinking about what they didn't do when they fall asleep at night. You know, oh, I didn't do that. Oh, I didn't do the meeting. I forgot to make this call. And so they create a mindset of I'm failing, I'm failing. And one of the things that I noticed with highly successful people as I shadowed them for literally 20 years, I went in the car with them, I sat in meetings with them, uh, you know, I, I got to ask them questions, and I saw that they would take 10 or 15 minutes every day to just sit quietly in their office, and I'm sitting on the other side, and I'm, I'm going, what are they doing? So one day I said, what are you thinking? What's going on in your head? And he told me, I'm thinking about my day, and I'm looking at all the successes I had today. And I said, well, what is success? And he says, it's the little things. He said, most people are looking for the gigantic things, kind of the program we're taught when we go to school and you graduate every four years. But he says it's the little things that make the difference. And he gave me an example of the guy who was on the way to make a huge presentation, but he had forgotten to stop and get gas, and so he missed the whole deal, and somebody else got the contract. So, you know, it's the little things, the eating your breakfast, it's it's having good relationships at home, it's exercising, it's all the little phone calls and the emails, and it's all the tiny things we do each day that accumulate into the big ones. And that was a really different perspective. Susan, can can you? I want to ask you this question: How yeah. do we create followers and successors? And and you know, tell us about learning how to effectively share success skills. 
Well, one way is get the book <laughs> and turn people <laughs> onto it. But, you know, being example is the most powerful way that you can share success skills. So I would say learn to do it yourself. And, you know, one of the things that I would suggest if you want to kind of fall in love with your life and your job again is teach your spouse to success file with you and make that be something you do together at the end of the evening. Uh, It really will change your life. So I find that couples really don't know what each other is doing during the day. They really don't have a sense of the little details. And very often when they ask each other, they go, I don't want to talk about that. But we do need to talk about it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to celebrate it. Otherwise, we're going to be unhappy and we're going to always be looking for something different than what we've got. And not only is that bad for us, but it's terrible for our kids. Because I studied, (laughs) this was funny too, 1,250 middle school students and their teachers and parents. And I asked the kids how many of them wanted to be successful. And this was in a big auditorium assembly. And only a few hands went up. I was shocked. Maybe a quarter of the kids wanted to be successful, and the parents all gasped. And I said, well, why don't you want to be successful? And the kids told me, because if you're successful, you never have time for fun. You're always late. You, your That's boss true. is always calling and asking for more. So they yes. had concluded, yes, they had concluded <laughs> that they did not want to be successful. How's that? Wow. I know wow. That's, a, that's an eye opener right there. I guess yeah. I, I'm going to tell, tell myself a little bit. I, I, yeah. so I've been in information technology. It's, it's nearing 20 years yeah. I've been in this field. And I can tell you where I've been on vacation and the phone is ringing and it's the office. And I can tell you (laughs) when I'm eating at night with the family, when I get home, on on the night that I do get home, that I'm able to partake in that, my wife always asks me, so so tell me, Ted, what happened today? And I'm like, I don't want to talk. Exactly. I don't you see, I don't you did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but you got it, Ted. Next time she asks you, talk about it. And don't bitch about it. This is what most people do. Actually celebrate it. Tell her what you're learning. Tell her what you were accomplishing. Tell her something nice that somebody said or an email you got that acknowledged you. Tell her the good stuff so that she'll feel good about you. And then when you're not there are you, or you're late or you're, you know, involved in something, she'll feel like she's supporting somebody who's making a difference. And that's really important. So, tell you know, me, yeah. Oh, no. Tell me about the, the three. Su- success has three essential parts. Oh, this is Could so important. Could you share important. that with us? I certainly will. If you look up success in the dictionary, in Webster's Miriam Dictionary, it talks about success as accomplishments, achieving things, reaching goals, making money, earning prizes, and all of that. But, you know, even if you, you know who Julianne Hoff is, right, the, the uh, yes. dancer, the fantastic dancer. Well, she's won all kinds of awards. Emmy's been a judge on Dancing with the Stars, and, you know, she's she's done all these things. And she said, but I don't feel good about my life. I don't feel successful. And so she and Strayer University are actually petitioning Webster's Dictionary to change the definition, but they don't have a new one. And this is what I've been studying my whole life. So here's the answer. Success has three essential parts. Yes, success is completion. It's being able to accomplish the things you write down on your list and you tell people you'll do. But, this is important, success is also deletion. It's knowing when enough is enough, when you've tried a method and it just isn't working, when you're in a relationship and it's time to let go of it, when you're pushing yourself too hard and too long and the wise thing to do is to delete it. Does that make sense? Totally. <laughs> yes, totally. To, a driven, to a driven man, that may sound like <laughs> <laughs> like quite a prescription. But there's a oh, third part. Okay. <laughs> There's a third part, too, and then we'll go back to deletion because I can see you connected with that one. Yes. Success is also creation. 
it's discovering, it's breaking through. It's that moment when you go, aha, ooh, I just realized, or especially, you know, my husband's in the tech world too. The, the oh, moment okay. w- where you go, oh, I real, you know, new program, new piece of information. Uh, uh, there's a breakthrough moment. And really all the completions we have and all the deletions we make are to add up to that moment, that moment of discovery, of creation. And you know who's really good at this is your kids. <laughs> They'll sure blow they you are. away. They'll blow yeah. you away with what they think of, you know, that, that we haven't thought of. So thank heavens they're going to be running the future because we've kind of gotten stuck in the day-to-day grind, and what I'm prescribing is the way out. <laughs> Totally, Susan. Totally. (laughs) Deletion. Totally. Remember that. (laughs) And and your kids, explain that to your kids so they can go, oh, Dad, so good. Are you really going to come to my game today? You're going to delete something else? Because I had a CEO actually on the phone in the office where I was sitting, and I heard his son screaming at him. And Afterwards, he said, I apologize, but you need to know why. He said, because it's his championship ball game today, and I promised I'd be there, but we've got a product launch that I had forgotten about. And so my son was saying, I hate you, Dad. You never keep your word with me, and you always Mm. make everything else more important. So, you know, delete some stuff <laughs> so your your kid starts to believe in you again and wants to be successful. Totally. I, I, like I said, I, I the best thing about this this podcast is it's therapeutic for me because I get to speak to smart people <laughs> like yourself, and I kind of get to change things on the fly a little bit because from time to time, I think it was um, Monday. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I think it was either Monday or Tuesday. And my wife said, you know, you sit on your your, your podcast and you talk (laughs) with all these great people. When do you start to take some of that stuff in? And I said, wow. Mm -hmm. Deletion, deletion. Okay, wife, (laughs) listen up. Deletion, deletion. (laughs) Okay, I want to give a bottom line here. Okay. Here's here's the truth of it all. When your success file, and that's your list of all the successes you've had in your life, and I suggest everybody start doing that regularly, but when your success file is low, you feel disappointed and discouraged with your life and with yourself, yes. and you lose faith in yourself. But when yes. your success file is full, you feel success. Full. Notice that somebody was so smart, I don't know when, but hundreds of years ago, that they created this word, word called successful. And so when your success file is full, you feel successful and enthusiastic about where you are and what you're doing now, and your kids will love you for it. Oh, my goodness. We, <laughs> hey, I just want to let our listeners know that we're, we're speaking with Susan Ford Collins, um, the founder of Technology of Success. Susan, I know our time is running tight with you, and we're, we're so appreciative of you spending the time with us. Tell us about the Technology of Success series. Give us some of the titles that are currently um, available for, you know, for people to purchase. Okay. And the number one is The Joy of Success, 10 Essential Skills for Getting the Success You Want. We're good at getting what everybody else wants, but this is about getting what you want in your life. The second one is Success Has Gears, and that is really important because CEOs said to me, you talked about gears and the joy of success, but give us some case studies. So this is 20 case studies of when the various gears of success and leadership are needed. And anybody who's driven any kind of an interesting car with a manual shift knows if you're in the wrong gear yes. at the wrong time, your life jerks and stall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the third book is called Our Children Are Watching, and they are. <laughs> and that's yes, 10 essential are. skills for leading the next generation to success. And I do coaching all the time. I coach in corporations. Uh, Yes, CNN called me America's premier success and leadership coach, and I coached the team at CNN. And uh, I 
constantly all day. I'm on the phone with people all over the world doing appointments uh, for one-on-one coaching and uh, speaking engagements in corporations. So that's what the technology of success is. It's telling you what highly successful people do that makes them have lives that work better than other people's. Susan, I'm going to ask for a freebie for our listeners. Um, The freebie is how do we avoid the crisis of our time? (laughs) Take time to celebrate yourself. (laughs) How's that? Susan, that is great. (laughs) That is great. Oh, you're fun. I like this. Deletion, deletion, deletion. Deletion, deletion. (laughs) And and you're saying deletion to a person that understands and totally gets it because – um, as as I've mentioned to you before, it's you know uh, I guess you know my my kids um, are at the age where it's basketball practice, it's volleyball. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's one practice. one thing after another. But you know one you're a computer guy, so keep yeah. in mind when you want to delete a word, let's say in a word program, you've got to highlight it and you've got to wipe it out, and then you've got to insert something else instead. And this is what we have to start doing in life is delete something, we've got to insert something we want there instead, a better habit, a new skill, something that will make us joyful instead of disappointed. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, (laughs) I am going to call um, our good friend um, Smith Publicity tomorrow, our good friend Uh Christy. Because she really delivered. She oh, well, really good, delivered. Oh, good, good, good. So, you know, yes, just come yes. up with some other questions and we'll do it again another time. Oh, definitely. <laughs> this this is the first time you're coming on, but this definitely won't be the last time. Want well, to give good. you a round of want to give you a round of applause, Susan? Thank you. <laughs> that sounds like the picture on my website, www. Technology of <laughs> of Success, <laughs> because you'll see an audience kind of cheering. So thank you yes. for giving me that soundtrack to go oh, along with it. Oh, oh, you're so you're so welcome. <laughs> so hey, just um, yeah. could you plug your Facebook page and, and or your Twitter? Oh page? yeah, everything is Susan Ford Collins. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. You know, Susan okay, Ford Collins. Great. That's how you find me, by my name. (laughs) You got it. You got it. Susan, thank you so much for joining us. And like I I said, I definitely want want to have you coming back. We loved you. And if there's anything we could do in the future to work with you.